Hi, Chris Good here, and this is another mechanism video. This one's going to be on caffeine. So, um, actually, in order to do this one, I'm going to draw our little uh, synapse over on this side of the screen. And just know that this is one of many, many of the billions, thousands of billions of synapses all over the brain. We have vesicles inside a presynaptic neuron, so this is presynaptic. We have receptors on the postsynaptic neuron, right? And they're going to be embedded in the postsynaptic membrane. So I'm just going to draw a couple of receptors for the neurotransmitter that's being released from the presynaptic neuron that's stored inside these vesicles, ready to go. And when we get some of this transmitter, Maybe it's an excitatory transmitter like glutamate. It's going to bind to its receptor, and then um, it's going to increase the frequency of action potentials in the postsynaptic neuron. So this is just a regular excitatory synapse. It could have glutamate, it could be acetylcholine, whatever. But what I didn't draw yet is this other neuron that's actually gonna form an axoaxonic synapse with the presynaptic neuron and it's going to also have vesicles full of transmitter ready to go, but these are going to be an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Um, let's call this uh, inhibitory neurotransmitter adenosine, right? These are adenosine molecules, and they bind to a G protein coupled receptor on the presynaptic neuron, right? Now remember, G protein coupled receptors have this other protein attached to it that has a couple of different pieces of it, right? When adenosine binds to adenosine receptor, this part of the receptor, the G protein that's coupled to it, clicks off. It comes away from the receptor and it floats around and Without getting into any more details, it does something to slow down the release of excitatory transmitter here. So uh, adenosine ultimately acts as an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So we can say adenosine is inhibitory because it works to decrease the release of excitatory transmitter from the presynaptic neuron onto the postsynaptic neuron. Now, here's where caffeine comes in. So I'm going to draw a little caffeine molecule up here, make a little star. When you drink a cup of coffee, or you have a cup of tea, or you eat some chocolate, that caffeine is going to go everywhere, but it's not going to do anything until it gets into a spot of the neuron where it can stick to something. And what caffeine likes to stick to is the adenosine receptor. But it doesn't activate it. Adenosine blocks the receptor for, sorry, caffeine. This, let's label our things so that we know what we're talking about. These little stars are caffeine, and caffeine is a stimulant. And caffeine sits on this receptor for ad inhibitory adenosine, and it blocks it. It basically prevents adenosine from binding, and adenosine normally would slow down the release of excitatory transmitter, when caffeine prevents that from happening, the release of excitatory transmitter is sped up. So you get more excitation when you have the stimulant caffeine preventing adenosine from inhibiting the presynaptic neuron. And that is how caffeine and theophylline and theobromine work in the synapse.